Welcome back to another session of listening. I hope you're enjoying this exercise. I hope you're enjoying the course. And today we move on to our second unit, as you see, Chapter 2. Not academic life, but experiencing nature. As you remember, always the chapters are in four parts. We have a conversation where we have the basic ideas and we have basic uh, vocabulary. Then we have always a presentation. In this one, you see it's a story. And then we have context. And finally, we have a task. So you'll get used to this regular procedure from unit to unit. And so if you look there, you'll see that today we're talking about nature. Nature surrounds us. Some of us uh, take holidays in nature. Some of us study nature. Let's see what we're doing. We're going to hear a conversation about vacation plans. We'll be doing that today. And then next time we go on to a story about camping uh, with context and real-world tasks. So let's get down to business. huh? Let's have introduce our unit. If you don't have the book, this is the second page of this chapter. Uh, we have a photo. We're going to look at this photo. Let me put the photo in focus there so you can see. I hope you see there this gentleman, this gentleman over there on our right. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see that he is hiking. And he's in a beautiful surrounding with lakes and mountains. And so he's out in nature. Um, what kinds of out outdoor activities will we hear about in our passage? We'll hear about swimming and hiking and other things we do out in nature. Uh, some of you probably have different kinds of weather you enjoy, and that's another subject we'll be looking at. Let's move right on to our work in this unit. That's introductory material. Let's introduce the two fellows who we're going to hear from in a few minutes. Uh, they're sitting there on their couch, and as you see, their minds are elsewhere. They are students like you, but their minds are not on their studies. Both of them are thinking of going on holiday, but very different holidays. One underwater, snorkeling, and the other one sitting on a beach. And we're going to hear them talk about their preferences. You might ha also have ideas about this, and I hope you'll enjoy the conversation. So that is our next task, and if you have the book, even if you don't have the book, you can follow the uh, passage as we do it. As always, we preview our vocabulary before we have the conversation. Here we have vo vocabulary at the top of the page. I'm trying to get this all in your view there. Previewing vocabulary, nouns, chance of, degrees, weather forecast, Get a tan is our verb, adjectives extra, freezing, sick of doing something, expressions how come, and an idiom, it's raining cats and dogs. Huh? Amazing, huh? but that means raining very much. Now, if you have solved them at home, you can check these. If you have the book, you could have prepared this for today. And you'd see that in the first one, we solved it by, wow, how come you're all wet? How come? colloquial way of saying why. How come you're all wet? Why? Because it's raining cats and dogs outside and I forgot my umbrella. Number two, in the summer I love to lie in the sun and get a tan. Well, perhaps in this part of the world we're not so eager to get a tan, but people in England and America, they can't wait to get into the sun and they want to get a tan. They want to get a brown color on their skin. Number three, the weather report in the newspaper says there's a 90% chance of, 90% huh? chance of snow tomorrow, a chance of possibility. Number 20, it's 20 degrees Celsius. Please notice the word degrees. Outside, you don't need a sweater. Uh, next, number five, when are we going to get to Las Vegas? We've been on the road for six hours. I am sick of driving. Number six, did you hear the weather forecast for tomorrow on the news? Yes, it's going to be sunny and warm, a perfect day for the beach. 
Uh, let's move down to number seven and eight at the bottom. Why don't you turn on the heater? It's freezing in this room. And the answer is it's broken. We have to sleep in our coats tonight. Number eight, you have an extra jacket. I forgot mine at home. Now you may, for those who don't have the book, you may be wondering what that picture is. So I think I should show you what it looks like when it's raining cats and dogs. Well, there you see the people with their umbrellas, and it's raining cats and dogs. Well, that was all preparatory to our main task. Our main task, of course, is to fill in the missing parts of the passage. Huh? We call this close work. This is going to be a very important thing for you when you're tested to choose the word from what you hear. So now, if you're with me, if you have the text, you can be filling it in. If you don't, you can be following it here with me and checking. Okay, let's do the first part of the close. Peter, wow, look, it's raining cats and dogs again. I hate this weather. When does winter break start? Jack, winter break, it's only October. Peter, I know, but I'm sick of studying. I want to go someplace warm and lie on the beach for a week. Someplace where it's sunny and dry. Florida or Hawaii, maybe. Jack? Yeah, where we can go swimming and snorkeling and get a great tan. Now that's my idea of a perfect vacation. Ruth? Not mine. I can't swim very well. I don't like lying in the sun. Peter? Oh, yeah. How come? Okay, let me now move this so those of you who don't have the book can see it. Bruce, I don't know. I just prefer the mountains, especially in winter. I love snowboarding. In fact, I'm planning to go to Bear Mountain with some friends in December. Do you want to come? Jack? No, thanks. I went there last year. I was freezing the whole time. Anyway, I don't know how to ski very well. Last year I fell down about a hundred times. Okay, let's go to the last part and then we'll be checking what you did. Okay, this is the end of our conversation. Now I have to... Uh, Peter, I'm sorry, Bruce says, Peter, how about you? Peter, sorry, I'm like Jack. I don't want to go any place where it's below 70 degrees. Jack, by the way, what's the weather forecast for tomorrow? Bruce, the same as today, cloudy, cold, and a 90% chance of rain. Jack, oh no, I left my umbrella at the library. Bruce, you can borrow mine. I've got an extra one. All right, let's now have a quick look at the solutions here to see if you uh, solve these correctly. It's raining uh, again. Hate, H-A-T-E. The winter break. I hope you understand here a break is a short holiday, a short vacation. Uh, Mid-semester break or winter break or a Ramadan break. These are breaks. Uh, October must be capital because it is a... It, of course, is a month, so please notice the capital O. I know I'm sick of studying, an idiom, to be sick of, not liking something. I hope you're not sick of preparing for this class. Uh, I want to go someplace warm, the beach, sunny. Please notice double N in sunny, huh? because we have a short U, uh, so double N, sunny. Swimming also, double M, because I, not I, I. We have a short, uh, short vowel that is stressed. We have a double consonant after, huh? A gray tan. Please notice in that's very important. We have the apostrophe. Notice the apostrophe above. Uh, let's go now to the bottom of the page here. Okay, mountains. Notice many words have the suffix a i n, as in fountain and certain. These are words taken from French. You just have to know them. Okay. Uh, planning, again, double N because of the short A. December, capital D. 
uh, freezing, single Z, because this is E, it's long, ski, S-K-I, I fell. Now, fell is a good example of where you have to use context. It's not felt and fell. It's not the difference in sound as much as the difference in meaning, which should make you choose that one. All right, let's now look at the remainder. I don't want to go any place. Notice written as one word because this is a pronoun, huh? like something or everybody. It doesn't mean any place. It's any place, something. Okay, So it is a pronoun, so written as one word. Degrees, once again. Weather, don't forget E-A. We have many words, short E with E as in dead and weather. So please notice that. Cloudy, okay, cloudy, give you an idea, rain, people, chance, borrow, double R, O, W, borrow. So these are all words that we expect you will know. Um, now we move on to something else uh, called reductions. Reductions. Uh, this is uh, at the bottom of this page you see here. I'm going to go up a bit here. Comparing unreduced and reduced pronunciations. Many times when people speak, I hope I won't do it because I'm teaching you, but in ordinary life, people many times reduce their speech. And they don't say it's raining cats and dogs, they say it's raining cats and dogs. Huh? And n is a reduced form. I want to go someplace, not I want to, they say I want to go someplace. Wanna, reduced form. These are not formal English, uh, number three, not we can swim, but we can swim. Not number four, I'm going to go, becomes I'm going to go. Number five, how about you, become how about you. I don't want to go, I don't want to go. Now, please realize I'm not going to teach you these forms, but I want you to be able to identify them from listening. Because many times you'll hear people using them. So what I want you to do in part seven... If you have the book, please uh, write it in the book. If not, please write it on other paper as we do this. What do you think is missing in this conversation? Jack. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Peter. Bruce and Peter. Hey, Jack. Bruce. What's happening? Jack. I'm going to the Campus Recreation Center. Do you want to come? Bruce. What are you going to do there? Well, it's a nice day. We can swim and lie in the sun. We'll continue to the end of the, and then we'll check it. This is the remainder of it. Thanks, but I don't want to go. I'm too tired. Jack, how about you, Peter? Peter, I can't. I've got to stay home, stay at home, and study. Maybe tomorrow. From your knowledge of the language, you should be able to supply the full forms instead of the reduced forms. So, when you heard, I'm going to the campus, do you want to, you will write, do you want to. What are you, what are you going to do there, or what are you going to do there, becomes what are you going to. It's a nice day, we can, becomes can, can swim, and lie and. So you're noting, I'm sorry, did I had it out of the space, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're stopping. Something wrong? Okay, sorry about that interruption. It was a technical problem. I hope it didn't cause any uh, disturbance. Uh, we're moving now to the end of this. Again, what you're doing here is you're taking reduced forms, and you must realize what they mean. Now, if I do this on a test, I give a reduced form, and you must choose the correct full form. We call them full forms. For example, thanks, but I, I don't want to go becomes I don't want to. Huh? How, how about you? Means how about you? So it's a matter of interpreting. Peter, I can't. I've got to, I've got to. Huh? And uh, stay at home, in the study, in stands for and. So this is a matter of interpreting. We call it continuous speech. You should be able to know 
Well, this is intensive work. All right, so that was reductions. Now we're looking at our vocabulary one last time here. When you're sick of studying, what you do, sick of studying, what you do to relax, you may watch television, uh, you may visit friends. In your hometown, what is the coldest temperature? What is the hottest? Of course, you'd use degrees. I understand this summer you had over 50 degrees centigrade, so get used to degrees. Uh, what is a safe way to get a tan? Well, something you probably don't want to do. Of course, you use uh, sunscreen. You put cream on your body so it, uh, to protect it. Just not a good idea anyhow. Uh, number four, are you afraid to drive if it's raining cats and dogs? Something doesn't happen to us very often here, but probably it's not a good idea to drive. How much extra time do you give yourself? Well, these are all questions. You need more time when it's raining. What is the chance of rain tomorrow? Well, I can tell you. Zero. Huh? We know that. <laughs> Very easy here. Six. What's the best place to get the weather forecast? Well, nowadays, most people go online, don't they? In the old days, you watch television. And number seven. What is worse for you to be freezing or to be too hot? You must decide. I'd rather be hot, but I find many times that here air conditioning is freezing. Now we have one major pronunciation topic in this unit, and this is again about stress. Remember we talked about stress in the first unit? In a sentence we have stress. If someone says, I want to go home, it's not I want, I want to go home, we have a stress. Also, when we use modals, we have stress. Look at the bottom here about can or can't. Notice the difference between pronunciation of can and can't in the following. I can meet you tomorrow. I can't meet you tomorrow. Notice when it's negative, it is stressed. We hear can't, but it, when it's positive, we don't. I can meet you. No, I can meet you. I can't meet you. Can is unstressed, so the vowel is reduced. It sounds like can. I can meet you. I can do it. If it's stressed, negative, can't is stressed, so the vowel is not reduced. Now, your job is to choose, and that's what you're going to be doing now. You are going to be choosing for these sentences that follow whether it's can or can't. Now, if you have your book, you will have this table here and you can choose. If you don't have the book, you can just write down can or can't. Or you can write down A for can and B for can't. So listen now to these sentences and decide whether you're hearing the reduced form, which is positive, or the stressed form, which is negative. Okay, get ready. Here we go. Can and can't. Number one. She can't swim very well. Two, Michael can drive. Three, the boys can cook. Four, I can't find his phone number. Five, Kenji can't speak Spanish. Six, he can speak Japanese. Seven, I can't understand him. Eight, Peter can come with us. 9. She can't take photographs in the rain. 10. Herb can play tennis very well. Now, if you did do that, if you did solve it along with me, these are what you should have found as the correct answers. First one, she can't swim. Michael, 2. Michael can drive. 3. The boys can cook. 4. I can't find his phone number. Five, Kenji can't speak. Six, he can speak. Six, seven, I can't understand him. Eight, Peter can come with us. Nine, she can't take photographs in the rain. Ten, Herb can play tennis very well. Well, what can I say? We finished the first part of Unit 2. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will make, take advantage of uh, these lessons. Remember, you can go back and listen again. It never hurts to repeat. Repetition is part of language, 
And in your situation especially, it's very important to be listening more than once. I have received some messages from you saying that things are not clear. I am trying to make it very clear, and I look at the meter here and it says it is. So maybe you need to listen again, perhaps. At any rate, thank you very much, and see you next time in the middle of Unit 2.